Well, it was really very simple. Uh, George Axelrod and I had wanted to work together. We had worked together, we'd collaborated on the script of Breakfast at Tiffany's and had been doing it for Marilyn Monroe and then the producers changed their mind and overnight cast uh, Audrey Hepburn and her then husband Mel Ferrer had never heard of me and uh, convinced them that they should fire me and hire Blake Edwards to direct the picture. So I was kind of out in the cold and George felt very badly about it and I did too. And uh, we wanted to find something else to do and he asked me if I knew this novel by Richard Condon, which I didn't. And he said he'd heard that it was quite good. And we went to a bookstore, which was across the street from his apartment in New York, and we picked it up. Read, each one of us read a copy that afternoon. That night, we bought it. And that was as simple as, it, as I can tell you. I mean, that's what happened. And, and how did you get it to Sinatra? Well, George had heard that Sinatra had loved the book and wanted to do it. So and George also knew Sinatra, and he called Sinatra. And he's, his agent was Irving Lazar, who was a good friend of Sinatra. And together with Lazar, Axelrod got Sinatra on the phone and asked him about Manchurian. And Sinatra said, I've always wanted to do it. I love it. And I'd love to do it. And I'm very interested. As soon as you write the script, let me see it. And uh, George and I worked on the script. And as soon as we finished it, we got it to Sinatra. Went down to see him at the Fontainebleau Hotel where he was singing. And he said, I want to do the movie. And once he said he wanted, we wanted to do the movie, it was a go movie. It had been a script. I mean, it had been a property that had been turned down by every studio in town. Uh, Mitchum had it at one time, and it was turned down with Mitchum. Everybody kind of liked it, but nobody wanted to do it. And until when we got Sinatra, it was suddenly a go picture. Um, how, did, how did you happen to cast Janet Lee in this Well, we needed somebody very beautiful and exotic and uh, mysterious to play Rosie. And um, we thought about who was available and who we ideally wanted. And we never talked about anybody else but Janet, strangely. I had always been a tremendous fan of Janet Lee. And um, I thought she was magnificent. And I thought she was a very, very good actress. If you stop to think about Janet Leigh, she's been in three really very praised movies from that period, which were uh, Psycho, <clears throat> Touch of Evil, and Manjarian Candidate. And each, I'm sure Orson Welles and Hitchcock cast her for the same reason I did, because she's so kind of striking and extraordinary, and there aren't two of her. Um, can you tell me about the day that you directed the famous scene that she had with Sinatra? Yeah, happened? I remember that scene, that day, very well. Um, we had started the movie. Sinatra was a good friend of both Janet Lee and her then-husband, Tony Curtis. And Janet had come in for a costume fitting I think two days before, and she looked very harassed and quite sad. And I didn't know her really personally, so I didn't really know what was going on. Well, it turns out that Tony Curtis had left her that day. And Sinatra said to me, he said, look, he said, Janet is really feeling terrible. He said, she doesn't expect to work. Can we shoot with her just to get her out of this mood that she's in? And it was a very complicated scene because it required a rear screen projection because of the train background. And usually this takes hours and hours and hours to set up and prepare. But I had a wonderful cameraman named Lionel Linden to whom I explained the whole problem. And I said, Curly, I said, when could you shoot this? It was by that time about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And he looked at me in that strange way he had because we had done already two movies and this was the third and we went on to do four more. And he looked at me and he said, when can you get the actors here? I said, uh, in about 45 minutes. He said, I'll be ready. So I went to Janet and I said, Janet, um, we've decided we really want to shoot the scene on the train today. How do you feel about that? And she's a consummate professional. I don't think she had any idea what our motives were. But she kind of gulped and said, okay. 
And uh, we talked about the scene a little bit. Sinatra knew the lines, she did also. We um, rehearsed, ran it through. And I didn't want to give her a whole lot of time to think about it. And I just said, let's do it. And it was the wide shot, I mean, it was the two shot that we did first. And we did it on take one, I think. I think that's the shot that's in the movie, is take one. I know Sinatra was always better on take one, and Janet was just terrific. And I said, that's that, and let's go around and shoot a close-up. And uh, we'd started at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we finished at 6. That's it. It's quite an extraordinary scene. It's almost page, it's almost word for word from the book. That's almost all Richard Condon's dialogue. People say, well, where did you ever think up dialogue like that? Well, the answer is I didn't. And nor did George Axelrod. That's Richard Condon. And it is almost word for word from the book. Howard Koch told me about a scene in Manchurian Candidate where they, you looked at the Baileys and Sinatra was out of focus. Yes, that's true. And, and he went to him and he said, Frankie, you've got to do it again. He said, you know that I won't do it again. And he said he worked harder in that movie. That movie meant so much that he did do it again. Well, he did it four times again, but none of them were as good as the one that was out of focus. So we used the out of focus one in the movie. And I got these reviews saying I was a genius for shooting this out of focus shot of Sinatra from the brainwashed guy's point of view. And uh, it actually had nothing to do with that. It just was we could never get it as good again. That's wonderful. We're fine. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. That's all we needed. Okay.